doing? Welcome back to our little classroom. Tonight, today, we're going to cover section 6.1, evaluating and simplifying radicals. Please remember, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, you can text me or you can email me and I will answer your questions as soon as I possibly can. Okay? Alright, well, come on, let's get started. The first thing I would like you to do is to pause the video. I have notes on the board. Copy down all of the notes and then we'll come back and explain. So now I'm going to exit stage left, which is your right, but I'm exiting now so you can copy the notes. Okay? Get it? You copy it down? All right, good job. Let's get started. Here we go. So, we are evaluating and simplifying radicals. So first we start off with the labeling and the laws of radicals. So first, let's label a radical. This is what we have right here. All right, most importantly, the index of the radical is Q. Okay, B itself What's on the inside is called the radicand. P is the power, exponential power, that's attached to the radicand. And the actual symbol itself is called the radical. So if you see this, these are all the parts. You have the index, you have the radicand, you have the exponential power, and you have the actual radical itself. Are you a radical? <laughs> are you a radical for math? He's a real radical, you know. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. All right, so these are all the parts. And now we talk about the laws of radicals, if you will. So uh, for uh, every A value, it's a real number greater than zero. And for every B value, that's a real number greater than zero. Then the qth, the qth root of A times the qth root of B equals the qth root of the product of A times B. The qth root of A divided by the qth root of B equals the qth root of the quotient of A divided by B. All right. Uh, number three. If the cube root of B to the power P, which equals the quantity of the cube root of B to the power of P, if this is to be the case, then we can conclude that the cube root of b to the power of p equals b to the power of pq. So this, the if part, the antecedent part, is the radical form. The then part, or the conclusion part, is that the radical form can also be written as the radical, I'm sorry, as the rational exponent. So the radical exponential form is b to the pq. So you can rewrite this as b to the pq. Very important. Number four. b to the power of negative pq equals one over b to the power of pq, which equals the quantity of one divided by b, quantity to the power of pq. Okay? And lastly, lastly, the nth the nth root of the nth root of b equals, well, you take your index here, m and n, and you multiply the index, equals the product m n root of b, which equals b to the power of 1 divided by the product m n. Those are the labelings and the laws and the rules of radicals that we're going to use in 6.1 and some of these we're also going to use in our, our next lesson okay our subsequent lesson 6.2 alright so you want to write these down hold on to them and we're going to go come back to them and I'll refer back to them okay let's go forward with uh, part B which is the radical form versus the exponential form so what we want to do here we want to go back and forth to have the radical form and write it in rational exponential form and vice versa. Alright? So here we go. So if we're going to start, so we start with um, the quantity square root of 1 
fourth to the power of three. How do you rewrite that? Well, the first thing I need to do is to inform you that right here, when there is no index, you don't see a number there, you know? You see no index. And you would assume that since there's no number there visibly, that it would be a one, right? But that's not correct. By default, when there's no number there, it's a two, okay? So by default, let's write that, by default. When the index is not uh, written, it is 2. All right? So the index here is a 2. It's a 2. We don't write it, but it's 2. That's the index. So let's rewrite this radical form into rational exponential form, okay? Let's rewrite this into rational exponential form right here. Here's the rule. If it looks like this rule here, we want to write it as a rational exponent. We want to write our radical as a rational exponent, all right? So you take the same B, which could stand for base, it's the radicand, but it's also the base, right? You take the base that's inside of the radical and write the base to the power of P divided by Q, okay? P divided by Q. So this is going to equal the radical, the radicand of the base, which is one-fourth to the power of P divided by Q to the three halves. And there you go. That's it. That's how you do it. Okay. How about this one? Well, what's our power right here? Well, you can write it two ways. You can write the one inside next to the 11. That's 11 to the power of 1. Okay? There's your P. P stands for power, right? P is the power. See? P, where is it? Right there. P is the exponential what? Power. P for power. Okay. So there's your power. There's your index. So this becomes 11 to the 1 third. And there you go, 11 to the one-third. Or you could have looked at it this way. Take the one away from here, make a parenthesis, and write the one out here. Either way, it's the same. That goes back to this rule right here. See how I have it written in radical form? Both of these mean the same. The P can be written on the inside of the radical, okay, as the exponential power of the base B, or the P can be written on the outside when you look at it as a quantity to the power. So P can go on the outside as a quantity to the power, or P can go on the inside of the radical. It doesn't matter. Either way is correct. Either way is fine. Both ways work, and they're both valid. Now, with our next example, let's go from the radical form back. Let's go from the rational exponential form to the radical form. Pardon me. Let's go from the rational exponential form, and let's write the radical form right here. All right, well, let's identify a few things. I know that 5, well, that's B. Got that. I know the 1, that's the P. Got that. And 2 is the Q. Okay. Put it all together. Draw the radical. 5 is the base. 5 goes on the inside. And my Q, which is the index, is 2. So 2 goes out on the outside, like this. 
and the power or the exponential power is 1. That goes there. That's it. Now listen, technically you're done. However, we do not write the index, we don't write the number 2 because we know by what? Default that if there's nothing here, then it is a 2. So don't write it. Furthermore, 5 to the power 1, I mean, it's so arbitrary, you know? It's just 5, <laughs> not to the power 1. It's just 5, so don't write that. So there's the answer. It's just the square root of 5. That's it, okay? I think when you're doing your homework, if you are going to Hawks, and if you try to put the 2 on top of the radical, it won't let you. If you write 5 to the power 1, it won't let you do that. So there you go. That's how you want to write it. All right. And last but not least, let's take this radical form and write it as a rational exponent. Well, that's going to be our base, which is 7, to the power of, again, PQ. P is 5. Q is 9. There you go. 7 to the power of 5 ninths. I'm writing parentheses. You don't have to write parentheses. I think it's a good practice, though. But you don't have to do it. It's a good practice. All right. So that's how you go from radical form to rational form. Now, with this last example down here at the bottom, we have to use our last rule right here. The last rule. All right. Which says that the nth root of the nth root of b equals the product of the index root of b, which equals b to the power of 1 over the product of the index. Okay, so the first thing you want to do here, if I can catch my markers, not them getting away from me, this, one, this equals, first let's go ahead and let's multiply the index here. Uh, 5 times 4, that's 20. So that equals the 20th root of 3. That's first. Because last I checked, 4 times 5 is 20. Right? So there you go. That's how I got 20. We also know by default there's a 1 right there. So you should not have any issue or problem writing this radical into rational exponential form. You see your P, you see the Q, you see the B or the base, go ahead and write it. Here we go. 3 to the power of 1 over 20. Congratulations. You're done. That's it for that. Okay? All right. So now let's look at some radical cases. There are like five radical cases that I want to explore with you. Five. Uh, of the five, uh, I have three of them on the board. So we're going to do three here. We're going to erase some stuff and do four and do five, and that's going to do it for section 6.1. Okay? So let's uh, get into some radical cases. Different mathematical evaluations and simplifications involving radicals. All right? Here we go. So let's look at our basic radicals. I call these basic because everyone pretty much knows what's the square root of perfect squares. Or at least you should know. I'm assuming that you do know. Right? Yes? Okay, come on, let's see. All right, so we have the square root of 64, which is 8, because 8 squared is 64. That's why. All right, if I take this 8 to the power of the index 2, 8 to the power of the index 2, I get back my radicand on my base, 64. That's it. So root 64 equals 8 because 8 squared is 64. Likewise, the root of 49x squared is 7x because... Um, 7x 
squared is 49x squared. How about this one? Square root of uh, 9 divided by 100. Well, that's going to equal the square root of 9 divided by the square root of 100. See how I split that up? That's the rule right here. That's rule number two. See, with rule number two, I went from the quotient of AB back to the separate uh, roots divided by the root. The Q root of A divided by the Q root of B. I split it up. I went in this direction. From the quotient to the split. Which makes it easier in a sense because you know the square root of 9, which is 3. And the square root of 100 is 10. Okay? So that's our answer. For the same reason as these above, if I square 3, I get 9. If I square 10, well, because 3 squared over 10 squared is 9 over 100. Same reason. All right. Last but not least, how about the cube root? Now we have this cube root, not the square root. Cube root. And by the way, all numbers greater than 2, all integers greater than 2, we'll actually write that number as the index. 2 is the only one by default that we don't write. 2 is like the base. It's like our starting. That's our initial value. 2. Square root, cube root, fourth root, fifth root, on and on and on and on. All right. So now we have the cube root of 64, uh, which happens to be 4. Uh, because 4 to the power of 3, 4 cubed, is 64. I call those the basic cases because we should be familiar with those now. That's not too difficult. If you're not familiar with your perfect squares and perfect cubes, go back and look at lesson 5.1. Right? No, I'm sorry. Not 5.1. Look at lesson 4.7. Yes, 4.7. In lesson 4.7, I talked about the uh, perfect squares and the perfect cubes in 4.7. All right. Well, what if we have a radical where we have a negative sign outside of the radical? Like here. We have a negative sign on the outside of the radical. How would we approach that? Well, that's the same thing as the negative of the square root of 25 which equals negative. Well, what is the square root of 25? Do you know? Do you know? Do you know? What does this equal? The square root of 25. What is that? Correct. 5. So my answer is simply negative 5. That's it. In like manner, the negative square root of 121z squared well, that's going to equal the negative of the square root of 121z squared, which equals, well, let me close parenthesis, which equals negative. Well, what's the square root of 121? 11. And what's the square root of z squared? z. And there you go. Negative 11z is the answer. Okay? Are there any questions about those? Any questions about that? Um, let me just make a note of something, ladies and gentlemen. Because as you go higher and higher up into your mathematical experience, you need to be accurate and correct. Let me just correct one thing about these problems. In actuality, if we look at this one, B, if we look at B, and if you look at B here also as well, um, the square root of 49x squared, it's really, right, it's really 7 absolute value of x. And this is really negative 11 absolute value of z. Because by definition of absolute value, the uh, square root of x squared is the absolute value of x. 
In other words, x has to be a positive number. x cannot be negative. Which really makes sense because any number squared is positive. Right? So it's just a statement of fact. But we just write it as 7x, we write it as 11z, but just know in actuality, this is the rule right here. That the square root of any variable squared equals the absolute value, stating that it is a positive answer, a positive number, not negative at all. And I think that leads us nicely to number three, negative inside the radical. Well, what if I have a negative sign inside of the radical? Two cases. Case one is in red. Case two is in blue. If you have a negative sign inside of the radical, and by the way, if what I'm saying is a bit too much, a bit too fast, here's what you do. You rewind. You put me on pause. You listen to what I'm saying again. Take your time with the video, okay? Because I really want you to understand what I'm saying. Sometimes you have to pause it, sometimes you have to rewind it, go over it again and again. Whatever it takes for you to understand, that's what you do. Okay? Alright, come on. Now, if the negative is inside of the radical, two cases. Case one, note, if the index is odd, odd numbers are like three. Index is five. Index is seven. Those numbers are odd. Three, five, seven. You, you get it, right? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> if the index is odd, then proceed to find the root. We can find the root. No problem. If the negative's on the inside and the index is an odd number, we good. We can find an answer. Well, watch this. Now check out the blue. If the index is even, then there is no real number solution. If the index is even, no solution. If the negative is inside of the radical and the index is even, no solution. If the negative is inside the radical and the index is odd, keep on going. Keep on working. It's going to work out. Let's check it out. Here we go. Notice this. I have a negative inside the radical, for example, 1, 2, 3, or ABC. Inside, inside, inside. Very good. My index here is odd. See that? That number is odd. That means that I can proceed to find the answer. The cube root of negative 27 is negative 3. That's my answer. Why? Because negative 3 cubed equals negative 27. Boom. Done. There you go. That's it. Just that simple. Just that simple. Okay. 27 is a perfect cube. If you don't know that, go back. Look at lesson 4.7. It's there. All right, B, now my index here, what's my index? There's no number there. What's the index? You should know it. I said it already. No number, the index is what? Ah, I hear you thinking. Very good. The index is two, which means that's going to be even. All right, so even numbers are numbers like two, four, six, eight, Okay. <laughs> okay, you, you know that, right? Okay, you got it. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, yeah, yeah, yeah. Alright. So, the index is even, and I have a negative inside of the radical. In the house. The negative is in the house with an even index, no solution. No solution. And the reason there's no solution, I'm going to let you figure it out. Watch this. Here's why there's no solution. Please, I want you to put a number inside that parenthesis, right? And since the index is 2, I want you to square that number. Now, you give me a number that you can square, 
that's going to give you a negative answer. I'll wait. Give me one. What number can you put right here, square it, and it's going to give you a negative 16? I'll wait. Well, no. No, I'm not going to wait. Because if I wait, I'll be waiting the rest of my life, the rest of my children's life, grandchildren's life, and great-great-grandchildren's life, and your life too. There is no real number. Imaginary? Yes, but we're not doing imaginaries. That's beyond the scope of our class. There is no real number. That's why it's no solution. You good? No solution on that one. All right, that's one. What is the cube root of negative eight? What is the cube root of negative eight? Well, let's take a look at it. Index is odd. Index is odd, what does that mean? That means what? Proceed. That means keep on going, keep on pushing. Let's do it. So, is eight a perfect cube? Yes. Is negative eight a perfect cube? Yes. It equals negative two because negative two uh, cubed is negative eight. All right, I'm finished with that. If you have any questions about what I've done so far, Please, rewind, go back, look at it again. All right, so now I'm going to erase all of this, and I want to put up radical case number four and number five, and we're done. All right, so what I want to erase, I want to erase all of this right here. This has to go. All right, let's erase this. Okay, let's erase this. And by the way, I hope everyone is doing all right. Please continue to stay safe. We got uh, COVID-19 and keep your hands clean, you know, social distance, limit your time outside. But go outside, exercise, walk around, get some fresh air. But if you don't have to be outside, stay in the house. Stay in the house, okay? And then for those who's watching this tape, maybe five, six, seven years from now, <laughs> 2020 was a mess. <laughs> 2020 was something. Oh my. Yes, it was. Yes, it is. All right. Let me erase all of that. Okay, here we go. All right. So now we have case number four. Case number four, um, find the square root or the cube root. Alright, that's case number four. Find the square root or the cube root. All right, so first let me give you the process that some of you will use. All of you will not use this process. Some of you will use it, some of you will not. So first let me write the process down, and you come on and write it down with me. All right, here's the process. Okay, so one, um, you are to write and equal sign write an equal sign along with an empty radical with the same index next to the original expression. All right, that 
That's step one. Step two. Step two. Factor. The radicand. Factor the radicand to prime numbers. All right. That's step two. Step three. Step three. Identify. that are circle, comma, select only one, only one factor from each group, one factor from each group as a product outside in front of the rack. There you go. All right, seems like a lot, I know. Write it down. Once we do it, it's gonna be easy. You'll understand it. It'll make sense to you. Just write it. This is not for everyone, okay? I have some students listening to me that may not need this. So this is just an addition to what you already know how to do. There are some who are gonna need this to know how to do this process right here, all right? So let's look at some examples and let's see what I'm talking about, okay? All right, here we go. Example one. What is the square root of 48? What does that equal? Root 48. Now, for all you guys who do not need this process, because you are an advanced placement student and you don't need the process, you know what to do. Here's what you do. Watch this. You find, you find the greatest you find the greatest perfect square divisible by 48. The greatest perfect square that's divisible by 48 is 16. 
because 16 is a perfect square. If you don't know the perfect squares, go back to lesson 4.7. Have I said that already? I think I have. Anyway, so the greatest perfect square divisible by 48 is 16. So here's what you would do. You would do the square root of 48 equals the square root of 16 times the square root of 3, which equals, and the square root of 16 is what? What's the root of 16? Good, 4. So the answer is going to be simply 4 square root 3, and that's it. So for you guys that know it this way and how to do it like that, well then you might not need this. Everyone else who was taught this way and you didn't get it years ago, don't worry about it. Follow my steps. You will never get these wrong again if you follow my steps. All right, let's go good. Here we go. Everyone else, let's do it this way now. All right, here we go, step by step. Here's the problem. Mr. Wright, what do I do? I do not know the square root of 48. Oh, pull out my calculator, right? Wrong answer. You can't do that on the test or any assignment with this kind of problem. Calculator not going to get it. You must go through the steps and simplify it and have a radical in your answer. All right, here we go. Step one. Step one. Write an equal sign. Let me show you how to write an equal sign. You write an equal sign like this. <laughs> See? Equal sign. <laughs> write an equal sign along with an empty radical. All right, so write an empty radical like this. See that? That is an empty radical. Nothing's in it. Nothing's there. Write an empty radical with the same index. Well, the index here is 2. The index there is 2. And you write this next to the original expression. Well, here's the original. There we go. Are there any questions about step 1? Good. Let's go to step 2. Step 2. Factor the radicand to prime numbers. Take 48. Let's break it down to prime numbers. It doesn't matter how you start. Okay? It doesn't matter. 48 is, I think, 8 times 6. You can start 12 times 4. It does not matter how you want to start. Okay? I'm going to go 8 and 6. So, uh, 48 is going to be 8 times 6. You see that? You good? Keep breaking down because see 8 and 6 are the prime numbers. Okay? Do you recall the prime numbers? Let me write them right quick. Prime numbers. Let me write a few of them. The prime numbers are 2, 3, uh, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19, 23. That's enough. And we can go on and on, 29, 31, and so on and so forth. I'll stop right here. Dot, 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 dot. All right. So where are we going with this 48? We have to go all the way down to these factors of prime numbers. Okay? So let's keep going. So let's break down 8. 8 is uh, 4 times 2, and 6 is 2 times 2. 3, we're almost there. You see, 2, 2, and 3 are prime numbers. See? 2 and 3. But 4 is not prime. Go one more time. Break down 4. What is 4? 2 times 2. Now, draw a straight line, bring down that 2. Straight line, bring down that 2. Straight line, bring down that 3. Very good. We have all prime numbers now which means step two is done. Factor the radical to prime numbers. That's over. Step three is the key. Step three is the key. That's the key step right there. Step three says identify the index. Let's do that right now. 
identify the index. So off to the side, I'm going to write the index is 2. Everybody good? Index is 2. Index is 2. Identify the index, then circle like prime numbers into groups according to the index. Well, the index is 2. So I want to group these by 2's. So these two are alike. I got the first two. And then these two are alike. I have the second group of 2. So I group them by 2's and I circle like prime numbers. That's a key step right there. If the index were three, you would circle three of these. If the index was four, you would circle all four of them. You circle or you group according to the index. Do you understand the words coming out of my mouth? <laughs> all right, come on. Step five. Let's do it. We're almost done. Step five. Any factor that is not circled goes inside of the radical. What did not get circled here? You see that three? Put it on the inside. Because it didn't get circled. So now we're there. Right? The factors that are circled, here they go. Select only one factor from each group. So take one factor from each group as a product outside, in front of the radical. So from this first group that circled, take only one of them. Take a two and put it right here as a product times then go to the other group right here, take one of them, a two, and put it right there, and we're done. Equals four, square root three. And that's what we got when we did it for those students who know how to do it already. Okay? Follow this process. You're going to always be correct. You're going to always be right. Let's do another problem. Let's do another one of these. Okay, example number two. And maybe this time I kind of speed it up a little bit because we're going to do the same thing over and over and over again. All right, this time let's look at the cube root. This is example two. The cube root of 108. What is the cube root of 108? I don't know. No problem. We can figure it out. Come on. The cube root of 108. Step one. Equal sign. Write an empty radical with the same index. See that? That's step one. Write an empty radical, same index. Done. Notice this. I left some space in the front yard, and I have some space inside the house. Inside the house, in the front yard, space. Step one is done. Step two, factor the radical into primes, break it down. All right, 108, let's go get it. How do we go? Uh, 12 times 9 is a good start. 54 times 2, it doesn't matter. So let's go uh, 12 times 9. I think that's 108. Yeah, 12 times 9. Keep breaking it down. Because that's not those are not prime numbers. What is 12? 12 is uh, 4 times 3. And what is 9? 3 times 3. See, you guys can do this. I'm quite sure right now you're feeling comfortable doing this. Give yourself a chance. Yes, you can. It's like the president, don't I? Yes, you, you can. <laughs> anyway, anyway, anyway. All right. <laughs> all right. Well, we don't have all primes yet. 
because four is not a prime number. Three is, but four isn't. Break down four. What is four? Two times two. Bring down this three. Bring it down carefully. Line it up perfectly. Bring down the other three. Line it up perfectly. Bring down the last three and line it up perfectly. Okay, there we go. We have two times two times three times three times three. All right, step two is done. Step three, the key step. Identify the index. What is my index? Index is three. Index is three. See that? That's a three right there. The index is three. All right. So that means that since the index is three, we're going to circle like prime numbers according to the index. So now we're grouping by threes. Well, look at the twos. How many twos do we have here? One, two. Can I circle those two? No, because the index is three. How many threes do I have? One, two, three. There you go. That's what you circle because of the index. Index says circle by threes. Now, we're done. Step four. Let's see what goes in the house and what stays in the front yard. What goes in, what stays in the front yard. What did not get circled goes in the house. See that? What, the, any factor, any factor or factors should be capital. That is not circled goes inside. What did not get circled here? Two times two did not get circled. So two times two goes back inside. One circle. What did get circled? These threes. You only put one representative from the group out front. Everybody can't be a president. You have three of them in the group. All of them can't go out front. Only one goes out front and speak for the group, or represents the group, right? So just choose one of these to go out front. There you go. That's the answer. You're done. This equals three, the cube root of four. That's it. That's how you do it. Are you comfortable with it? You got it? Uh, let's do one more and I'm done. Let's do one more. Let's do one more. Let's do one more like this. I'm going to move on to the variables. One more. Come on, one more. One more, one more, one more. All right, let's look at what well, we've done. One. We've done this one already, but we're going to go back to it. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Well, let's look at two more, two more. Let's look at the cube root, the cube root of 48. We did the square root of 48. Let's do the cube root of 48. Then we're going to do one more after this, and we're going to move on to the variables. All right, so first, write an equal sign, write the cube root symbol, and stop. Good. Step two, prime numbers. Break it down in primes. Six times eight, um, three times two, four times two. Um, bring down the three. Um, bring down the two. And four, as you know, is two times two. And this last two, bring it on down. It's kind of important that you line these up. If you don't line them up, you're going to make a mistake. Line them up. Okay, I'm not going to say that no more. All right. So now, identify the index. What is our index? The index is three. How do you know? There it is. Right there. Index is three. So now you're grouping by threes. Okay, so do I want all four of these? No, I want three of them, like this. One, two, three. Why? Why, why do I want three? Because that's the index. You group by threes. So now we have to determine what goes in the radical, what stays outside the radical. What goes in the house, what stays out in the front yard and play a little while. All right? Well, in today's society, it's best to be in the house. But anyway, let's see what goes inside, what stays outside. This goes on the inside, because it didn't get circled. So three times two, inside. What gets, what did get circled, only one representative goes outside. Two, you're done, that's your answer. 
So it is 2, the cube root of 6. That's it. One more, and I'm finished for real. In fact, let me just write it over here. You might want to try this one on your own. How about the square root of 72? How about the square root of 72? All right. How would you break it down? You can pause me. Try it yourself. If you want. So first, I'm going to write the house. Put the house there. Step one. Step two, break 72 down. 72 is 9 times 8. 9 is 3 times 3. And 8 is 2 times 4. And 4 is 2 times 2. Bring down this 3. Bring down this 3. Bring down this 2. And there we go. There we go. It's broken down. Next, identify the index. What is my index? The index is 2. How do you know? Because right here, there's no number there. The index is 2. So now I have to group according to the index. According to the index, it says group by 2's. So I have 2 3's. I'm going to circle 2 2's. And that's it. And now you can see what goes in and what stays out. It's obvious. What didn't get circled? A 2 back in the house. So this 2 right here goes in the house. What did get circled? Only one representative per group. One. So a 3 from this one and a 2 from that one. And it's the what? It is the product of those two numbers. Product means multiply. So my final answer in this case is going to be 6 square root 2. And that's it. Alright? Alright. Now let's take a look at some Variables. We're still under number four. We're going to go to five in a second. Stay with four. Now, there are many ways to teach the variables, and I don't want to get into a lot of different ways to teach it. All right? But I want to give you a way that will always work and be beneficial to you. All right, what if I have the square root of x to the power of six? What does that equal? Well, you can take this and you can go back to rule number three. Remember rule three? Okay. Why don't you take this and write it like that? Take the radical and write it as a rational exponent. exponent. All right. Well, you know by default the index here is two. So this is going to equal x to the six divided by 2, which equals, well, what's 6 divided by 2? Yeah, 3. x cubed. So there you go. The square root of x to the power of 6 is x cubed. Okay? How about the square root of x to the 7th? What does that equal? Oh, Mr. Wright, do the same thing again. So write that as x to the power of 7 halves. And I'm done, right? Wrong. You're not done. Because this is not simplified. This is not simplified. So therefore, I'm going to show you how to do both of these in another way that I don't want you to forget. Here's what you are to do. If you have the square root of x to the power of 6 equals, I want you to write the house back as we did up here. If you have x, the square root of x, to the power of 7, 
I want you to write the house back as we did up here. All right? And then if you're not afraid to go with me to, I think maybe fourth or fifth grade, go back with me to fourth or fifth grade. I'm going to show you how to do these and always get them right if you're not afraid to go back. Can you go back that far? Yes, you can. Come on, let's go. All right. So what you do, you take the index here which is 2, and you divide the power by the index. Here we go. So we're going to go 2 divided into 6, and we're going to go 2 divided into 7. Okay? And let's just do it the way you did back in, I don't know, maybe not 4th or 5th grade, maybe 3rd grade. Watch this. How many times is 2 going to 6? Three times. 3 times 2 is 6. The remainder is what? 0. Watch this, ladies and gentlemen. This number is the x's outside. This number is the x's inside. That's it. How many x's go outside? Three. How many x's remain? See, r is the remainder. How many remain inside? None. There are no x's in here. See you later. It goes away. That's it. How about if I divide now 2 into 7? Let's do that. Let's divide 2 into 7. Let's do it. How many times is 2 going to 7? 3 times. 2 times 3 is 6. What's the remainder? 1. You can see that? This is how many go outside. This is how many remain inside. Okay? So this number is out, and this number is in. Outside, inside. Let's put three X's on the outside. And how many X's on the inside? One. There's the answer. That's it. Here's the answer for that. There's the answer for that. That's how you do the variables. So whenever you have variables, go back to grade school, do it that way, and you should be good. That takes care of part four. Let's do part five, and I'm finished with 6.1. If you have any questions, comments, email, text me. I'll be sure and happy. I'll try to answer your questions as expeditiously as possible or just pause the tape, rewind it, and go over it again. All right, I'm gonna erase all of this. So we're gonna, so, so, so number four was the big one. Four was huge, four was huge. Four was huge. And we're gonna go back and look at four, which really makes up five. So we're gonna look at four again as we do problems for part five. Okay, part five. All right, your instructions are to simplify. All right, and these are the more complicated, more challenging problems, but it's okay. We're gonna help you get through it. All right, so for example, let's say we have the cube root of 72 x to the 11 y to the power of 12 divided by 125 x to the fifth y to the power of 6 okay let me give you like a brief little process here 
Let's give you a brief little process. Process. First, exponents. Two, split. Three, denominator. Four, simplify. Five, remember. The denominator. Okay, so when I say denominator, I like to say term. I like the term denominator. Uh, place in back pocket. Place your denominator in your back pocket. This process is pretty simple, but as we go through it, you'll see what I'm talking about. All right. So when I have something like this and I want to simplify, the first thing I'm going to do is I'll simplify the exponents. Okay. So that's what I mean when I say exponents. Deal with the exponents first. So if I do that, I'm going to have the cube root of 72, well, 125, I'll subtract the exponents, 11 minus 5, 11 minus 5 is 6, x to the 6th, and then 12 minus 6 is 6, y to the 6th. Alright, so that's what I did first, I just had to subtract the exponents. That's what we mean when we say look at the exponents first. Alright, step two. These two things split up the fraction. Go back to our rule right here. Rule number two. Split it up. So that's going to give me the cube root of 72 x to the 6, y to the 6 over the cube root of 125. Okay, so that's done. That's the split. That's step two, which is right here. The split. Step three. Let's work on the denominator and put that answer in our back pocket. So the denominator is the cube root of 125, which equals 5. Put that in your back pocket. Okay, good. That's in my back pocket. That takes care of that. Step four, simplify the numerator. Simplify numerator. This step is the work step. That's the work step. What's my numerator? My numerator is the cube root of 72x6y6 equals cube root of, so we have to see what goes in, what goes out. We just got finished doing this. What goes in, what goes out. We just got finished doing it. So now let's split this up and let's work on it. And let's do it piece by piece. All right. Let's look at the cube root of 72. The cube root of x to the 6. And the cube root of y to the 6. I'm taking each thing in here and splitting it up. I'm splitting it up. Then I'm going to put it all together right here. Pretty simple. Not too bad. Let's do it. First, this is the most challenging one right here, the numbers. Let's break it down. 72 is uh, uh, 8 times 9. 8 is 4 times 2. And 9 is 3 by 3. And 4 is 2 by 2. Bring down this 2, bring down that 3, and bring down that 3. Okay, how are we grouping? 
We group them by threes because the index is three. So group by threes. I have a set of three right here, and that's it. So now you have to know what goes in the house, what goes out the house. What goes in the house? What did not get circled? Three times three. What's three times three? Nine. So nine goes in, and what goes out? Only one representative. Two. That's probably the hardest part. I always say the coefficients are the most work. This is pretty easy. That's just straight division from third grade, right? So now it's three into six. Three divided into six. See that? Three going to six two times, which is six, remainder is zero. Two X's go outside, zero X's are inside. So two X's out squared goes out, no X's are in. The same with the Y's. 3 into 6 goes 2 times, remainder is 0. Remember, this right here is inside. That, better yet, say remain. Like you're saying remainder, it remains inside. And this number right here is what goes outside. So how many y's go outside? Two of them. y squared. How many y's are inside? None. Okay. So, there we go. All right. So, there we go. And so, that's the answer. We all done. Right? No, we're not done. Because step five says, remember the denominator. And where is the denominator? In your what? Back pocket. And what's in your back pocket? Where is it? There it is, five. So put this number back into the what? Right, denominator. Now we're done. I know, I know. I hear you now. Oh, ah, oh stop it. Stop. Practice makes what? No, 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 not perfect. Practice makes better. Just practice this. You get better at it. Trust me. Let's do a couple more and I'm done. I'm done. Oh, and by the way, with these lessons, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not doing like 6.1A, 6.1B, 6.1C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P. No. I'm doing 6.1 in totality. 6.2 in totality, 6.3 in totality. Each lesson is in totality. I don't break it up by the A, B, C, D, E, F, G. It's just the whole lesson in totality. Okay? All right, let's do another one. This one's done. We're going to do it a little bit faster. All right? I think you get the gist of it. All right. Let's go. We're going to do two more and we're done. Give me the cube root of 128 uh, x to the 17y to the power of 3. Let's do that. How about it? Well, the first thing we're going to do is draw an equal sign, put a cube root there. That's step one. Because we don't know what's going to go in, we don't know what's going to go out, we just don't know. Alright, now what I'm going to do is take each term and split it up. I'm going to look at the cube root of 128, and I'm going to look at the cube root of x17, and I'm going to look at the cube root of y cubed. I'm going to look at each case individually. I'm going to get each one in the All right. 128. Let's break it down. Doesn't matter how you start. All right. So what is 128? Let me see. Let's go 2 times 64. 
Yeah, because 2 going to 12 six times and 2 going to 8 four times. 2 is a prime number. I'm finished with 2. Let's break down 64. What is 64? 8 times 8. What is 8 times 8? 4 times 2. And this one right here is going to give me 4 times 2. Break this down. 2 times 2. Bring down this 2. And this is also right here, what? 2 times 2. And bring down that 2. And then don't forget to bring down this 2 as well. Wow. That's a lot of 2's right there. That might work out pretty good. Let's see what we're going to get here. How are we grouping? What's the index? Index is 3. How you know? There it is. So we're going to circle by 3's. Here we go. There's one group of 3. Here's another group of 3. And we're done. So we see what goes in and we see what goes out. What goes in the house? Well, this too did not get circled. So he goes in. And then one representative from each go out front. So that's going to give me a two from this one times a two from that one. Okay, that takes care of this part. That's done. Mm -hmm. And do we know 2 times 2? Two? 2 times 2 happens to be 4. So I can write a 4 right here. Good. Let's break down this one. This is the hardest part right here. This is pretty simple. Because it's going to be 3 divided into 17. How many times does it go? 5. 15. What's my remainder? 2. There you go. So now you see how many goes outside. How many stays inside? Five go outside. X to the fifth. Two stay inside. X squared. Done. Now let's do our last one. Three into three goes one times three. Remainder is zero. How many go outside? One. How many stay inside? Zero. So one goes outside and that's it. That's the answer. That was done. I want to do one more problem. Last one. All right. One more problem. And I'll be done. One more. All right. Last one. Last one. Let's look at the cube root. of 81 x to the 15th y to the 12th divided by 64 x to the 4th y to the 4th okay here we go last one for chapter section 6.1 all right step one exponents simplify all right so i'm going to have the cube root of here we go, 81, 64, all right, 15 minus 4, 15 minus 4 is x to the 11th, and then 12 minus 4 is y to the 8th, all right, step 1 is done, I have to simplify the exponents, step 2, split, all right, so I'm going to have the cube root of 81, x11, y8 over the cube root of 64. Step two, done. Step three, denominator. Simplify it, put it in your back pocket. Okay, the cube root of 64 is four. It goes in my back pocket. Done. All right, next step. Simplify the numerator. What is the numerator? The numerator is the cube root of 81x11, y to the 8th. Again, split it up into three sections. All right, here we go. We get the cube root of 81. 
we got the cube root of x to the 11. We got the cube root of y to the 8th. Three sections here. Split it up so we can find out exactly what this is going to equal. We can see what goes in or what stays out. All right. Let's do this part first. This is the most challenging part. How are we going to break down 81? 9 times 9. Break down 9. 3 times 3. Break down 9. 3 times 3. Do I have all prime numbers? Of course, I have all 3's. They're all primes. What's my index? The index is 3. How you know? It's right here. So I have to group by 3's, like that. Boom. Now, tell me what goes in, what goes out. If you did not get circled, you inside. A three goes in. Only one representative of the group. See, there are three of them in this group. All of them can be the president. Only one. Only one president. So only one goes and represents everybody. So I'm finished with this one. Move to the, the, the one in the center now. So now I have to divide. Three into 11. How many times does it go? Three times. Three times three is nine. What's my remainder? Two. So three go outside. And two remain inside. So put X, three of them outside. And two inside. Okay? In fact, I need to move this over just a little bit. I didn't give myself enough room. Got to give myself some more room. Q root 2x squared. Got to give myself some more room. All right. So with the x's, we said 3 are out and 2 are in. Let's do the y's now. So 3 divided into 8 goes 2 times. That's going to be 6. Remainder is 2. So we have 2 inside and we have 2 outside. So we have 2 on the outside for our y's now. And we have 2 on the inside. Congratulations. You did it. Good job. Good job. What? Oh, 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 yes, 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 yes. The, the back pocket. I, I forgot. Yeah, wait, wait, wait. Oh, the four. <laughs> Don't forget the four. Thanks for reminding me. I forgot about that four. So make this four, see, the denominator. Remember the denominator, which was in your back pocket. So put all of this over four. And now you're done. Okay, that's really going to do it. I'm finished. I don't want to make it too long of a video. This video has been long enough. Um, that's it for section 6.1. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Watch the video again. Slow it down. Pause it. Go over the problems again. Thanks for listening. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, issues, cares, concerns, worries, woes, didn't get it, couldn't get it, redos, retries, do-overs, whatever it may be, uh, reach out to me and I'll be uh, more than happy to help you. Stay safe. Take care of yourself, and I will see you again real soon.